and welcome to Anne and St Andrews on this Easter Sunday. The weather is glorious and there's so much going on inside today. But one thing I want to tell you about is if you hear somebody say, Christ is risen, we want you to say at home, He is risen indeed. Okay, so Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Right, let's go and join them inside. Come on. And to everyone here in church or indeed watching on home, at home online, welcome to St. Andrew's Church as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ this Easter day. Here, together and in person for the first Easter in three years. Unfortunately though, coronavirus has still taken its toll and Reverend John Pickles, our minister, can't be with us today due to COVID. We send him and everyone else who has been affected by this pandemic over the last three years our thoughts and prayers as we think of them for a speedy recovery. There are a couple of notices this morning. First of all, tea and coffee, uh, we're pleased to say, will resume being served next door in the church hall after morning worship from next Sunday, that's the 24th of April. The wearing of face masks in the, the hall will be optional uh, as the legal requirement to wear a face covering in all indoor settings, as you're probably aware, is removed after uh, the 18th of April, so from Tuesday of this week. Uh, there is a joint meeting of 
Annan St. Andrews and Brightkirk, uh, which has been arranged for Monday the 26th of April at 7 p.m. That's here in St. Andrews Church to discuss the new presbytery plan. And that's open to anyone that wants to come along from the church. Um, the Reverend Eleanor McMahon of the Change Committee will speak to us about the plan, after which we will be able to discuss it uh, ourselves. Finally, the first meeting of Moving On will begin on Tuesday the 26th of April from 2 p.m. in the Church Hall. Um, this is a, a chance for anyone to come along for a blether, a tea, a coffee, games, bring your knitting if you want, seriously. Um, everybody's welcome and more information uh, is available from Maureen Burdett if anybody uh, needs that information. If you're watching online and you need more information, if you go on our website, which is stabc.online, bit of a mouthful, I remember it as St. Andrew's Brightkirk Churches, stabc.online. If you go on there, there's a contact form and we'll make sure Maureen gets, gets the message. Um, we're continuing not to pass the collecting plate around during the service, uh, and there's a, a, a plate at the entrance to the church as you come in or go out. There's also a little machine there if you want to make an offering where you can donate using a card or a smartphone. And if you're at home uh, watching online and you want to make an offering, again, if you go on our website, stabc.online, <laughs> uh, and scroll right the way down towards the bottom of the first page, there's a little section that says giving, and there's a link there where you can donate online. That's the notices. Let's now come together in worship. Throughout the morning, we'll be using the phrase, Christ is risen, to which we would like you to respond, he is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, we didn't quite take the roof off. We'll have one more go. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you. You have turned our mourning into dancing. You've taken away our funeral clothes and reclothed us in joy so that our whole being, body, mind and soul might sing praise to you and not be silent. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. O oh Lord, we will give thanks to you forever for this glorious day. We're going to begin our service with our next hymn. Uh, please stand if you're able as we sing Glorious Day. Thank you. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Yeah. 
Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, the valleys and shadows of death have until this day contained the ultimate sacrifice. What Jesus gave up for us on Good Friday, out of his love for us, God's people, carrying with him our sins, our transgressions, so that through him we may know his Father better. Through him, we may find the path to worthiness and be washed clean. Today, on Easter Sunday, that path has been cleaved open. Today, the light of the world returns strong and burns brightly for all to follow. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The stone has rolled away and the shroud has lifted. A new dawn is upon us, the light filling our souls with a warmth that can only be found in the purest of love. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. An empty tomb fills an empty space in the hearts of all followers of Jesus. The initial confusion of the disciples replaced with what we all feel today, joy, an ending, powerful joy, a joy that ignites the soul. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Out in the world there is a new beginning. Hallelujah! This is God's Son, born again, resurrected so that we might have hope. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we are safe in the knowledge that as we love God, as we love his Son, so in turn are we loved. So in turn we are encouraged to show our love to our friends, our neighbours, and though we may stray from that path that has been cleaved anew, Though we may find ourselves tempted to wander far to the shadows on the side of the road, the light that has been born again guides us home. A burning presence full of warmth, a steadying hand on our shoulder, keeping us safe, loving us forevermore. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from John's Gospel, chapter 20, reading from verse 1 to verse 18. The Resurrection. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, 
and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going towards the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. But as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. We now stand to join together and sing the hymn, Because He Lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive.
Christ is risen. risen. Well done. It is wonderful to have reached this point, to be experiencing the resurrection after the darkness of the cross, the fulfillment of Jesus' work, overcoming sin on the cross and defeating death by rising again. In our reading for today, Mary Magdalene and the disciples find the tomb empty and they are confounded. It is a mystery. What on earth has happened? Mary is left in the garden to weep. While there, she is met by a man that she did not know. As the man speaks her name, she recognises that this is Jesus, and he begins to explain. It's a wonderful moment of recognition as the mystery becomes clear. And the first sign of resurrection life I want to talk about is clarity. We hear in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. What the Bible tells us is life is like a mystery, a space that we can barely see through. And everything we see moving around it seems to be shrouded in darkness, a riddle. But as Jesus comes into the world, he gives us some clarity. And the riddle starts to become better, clearer, until at the end we can see as we were supposed to see. That's what Jesus wants for us. That's why he came to earth, so we can have that clarity of resurrection life. Even now, we struggle to see clearly, but it is getting better. And one day we shall know fully, as we are known fully by God. For me, at this time, when so much is happening around us that we struggle to fathom, so many people have said, this is strange, I I don't understand it. And the clarity that Christ declares, Christ is risen, he is risen risen indeed, is so important that we declare this, that we live this out. No matter what happens, this truth sets in us eternity. We know that this life is but shadows, but the new dawn of Christ's resurrection is light and clarity. It allows you and me to say, I do not understand what is happening, but God knows, and I trust him. I think that phrase will become very important for many of us over the coming weeks, especially as we look after one another and as many of us face the realities of death. It was this sort of clarity that allowed the disciples to do what they did, to live, to lose their lives, sometimes in horrible ways, in the service of bringing others to Jesus. It is this clarity that gives strength to Christians all around the world in the many bad things that happen to people wherever they are. The wonderful clarity in today, new life, resurrection life, is to grant you the ability to see as God sees you, as God sees this world, not as we see it. Christ is risen. He is risen Amen. We're going to sing that great resurrection hymn now, Thine be the glory.
We pray this prayer as we celebrate hope over discouragement, victory over defeat, and life over death through Christ this Easter. Almighty God, the reminder that you are almighty is hope for us in this glorious Easter day. So much has passed that's beyond our control, the pandemic, wars throughout the world, injustice and inequalities everywhere. Yet we, as believers, can rest in the firm and certain knowledge that you will work all things for the good of your people. Scripture promises us that you are the good potter. We ask you to take the broken pieces of our lives and form something good, something to startle and amaze us, like you startled the women at the tomb. The women came to the tomb, a place of decay and death, ready to meet you. They went away instead with good news. Hallelujah. You had conquered the grave, and you graft us into that moment, that promise, as your people today. Transform us today through your power. Forgive our sin, redeem the dead places in our lives, and plant new seeds of life and hope. May we live as expectant, even exuberant, people of God, walking in your light, covered in your love, sustained by your grace. Lord, where we are afraid, bring strength and peace. Where there is anger and division, bring humility and unity. Where there is lack, bring your abundance. We confess as your people, your spirit is alive and active. Give us the eyes to see it and the willingness to be used by it. Christ, when you were on earth, you said, Blessed are those who believe, yet have not seen. While we are not face to face with you like the disciples of old, we affirm that you are working, even now, to redeem your creation. We affirm as your people, Christ is risen. Yes. He is risen indeed. Could it be that we are uniquely poised to see you move in big ways at such a time as this? Release your spirit, your ruach, and let it blow, blow through us and our needy land. Bind us together as one people in your service. Use us as agents of your grace and move mightily through your church. For the world is hungry for what only you can provide. Only you offer enduring peace. Only you offer victorious hope. Only you offer unconditional love. And scripture promises that those who seek you will find you when they seek you with all their heart. Hold our tender hearts in your strong hand. Let us experience your Easter promise, face to face with your grace. May your victory be our victory, as we await the promise of all your glory, face to face in heaven. And now we continue with the words Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
the Baptist stone that has been rolled in front of us, Jesus' tomb, had been moved away. Inside the tomb, where Jesus' dead body had been, there was no sign. <coughs> Not the flesh, but just the grave clothes. Jesus' body was gone. Now we often use an Easter egg as a symbol of that empty tomb, and that's why it's not Jesus now. I hope some of you got Easter eggs this morning. This one here doesn't sound like it's full of Cambridge Wells, half the chocolates are available. <laughs> but this one here, we don't know what's in it. So to find out what's in it, I'm going to have to break it. So, oh, <laughs> oh, there's nothing in it, nothing. The egg's empty, and the tomb was empty. On that first Easter morning, the impossible happened. That's what Mary and Jesus and Jesus' disciples discovered when they went to the tomb a couple of days after Jesus was buried. There was no body. We'll give you the opportunity to take away those eggs as reminders after the service if you find them. So, <clears throat> on the first Easter morning, the impossible happened. Not only was the tomb empty, but Jesus was walking around meeting people. Jesus had been raised from the dead. He was alive. And over the course of the next 40 days, over 500 people saw Jesus in his new resurrection body. Imagine. On that first Easter morning, the impossible happened. Death could not hold Jesus in the grave. It was defeated and Jesus was raised to life. One of the first people who saw Jesus alive was Mary. And on meeting Jesus, Mary's life was transformed. Instead of being really sad, Mary was full of joy. Instead of feeling confused, Mary was full of love for Jesus. And instead of being in utter despair at the death, Mary was now full of hope. The impossible happened on that first Easter day. Jesus was raised from the dead. He met people. Their lives were changed. And when we meet Jesus, our lives are changed too. Jesus changes lives. We wrap that up in a prayer. It's an Easter egg prayer. <clears throat> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we look at this broken Easter egg, it reminds us of our world, broken by our sin and rebellion. Thank you, Lord, that you were willing to come and put things right by dying for us on the cross. Help us to never forget what this cost you. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, when we look at the empty Easter egg, it reminds us of the empty tomb. And on that first day, the impossible happened. We ask that you would breathe your resurrection life into each and every one of us so that we can serve you and bring hope to others. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, we look at this Easter egg overflowing with chocolates. It reminds us of your goodness. Thank you for the many blessings that you pour into our lives every day. Help us to go out into your world and share the good news of your love with those that we meet. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Amen. Oh,
rejoicing in Jesus' resurrection and all that this means for us, let us go into the world to shine for his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.